Hi, just taking a look at a PCB from a um, faulty SMEG oven that we've got. Uh, it's, I think it's an OPA330X, something like that. Um, so yeah, this is one of the, well, I guess this is the main uh, control board in the thing. And the symptom is, is that um, it's, there's an auto lock-in mechanism. It's got like a physical interlock for the front door. So when you're cleaning the thing, it uh, would... Um, like automatically lock the door so you can't open it because the cleaning mode really hot high intensity kind of you know so it automatically locks it for safety and for the child lock as well you can set like a child lock so kids can't open the oven and stuff and it's got a big physical mechanical army thing i'll try and um insert a photo here and um yeah that interlock has um uh, failed and it keeps going click clunk click clunk click clunk click clunk yeah it just gives an f33 after a minute of going click clunk um, it gives an F33 error message, um, and then just doesn't do anything, locks up. So yes, I've tried turning it off and on again, um, and that doesn't fix it. Uh, the capacitive touch display um, has, uh, like, once or twice, I think, has actually got, like, as like a couple of buttons have actually locked up on it, and just power cycling it fixes that. But um, power cycling is what caused this issue like it was working fine and we we're trying to fix the button problem and we power cycled it and then this interlock thing comes on anyway really annoying uh now uh, this board i believe has been replaced before i was not involved in this mrs e vlog uh, did it but apparently it went uh, it released the magic smoke went kaput when it was in that uh pyro uh, cleaning mode, that high temperature pyro cleaning mode, um, and there's a big black mark, I'll uh, put a photo here, a big black <laughs> burn, Ernie Bernie mark, um, which is actually uh, the, it's in this orientation here, and the Ernie Bernie mark um, is under these relays here, but as you can see, this is not, um, there's nothing that's burned on here and it's not caused by this board so i would presume that this board was swapped in the last repair um and we've had a repair we've had a quote on this thing um and it's like 500 bucks just for the board apparently <laughs> it's ridiculous anyway i'm having a look at this uh just having a look at the board although i think it's more likely to be a uh, mechanical issue because once again i'll put up the photo here of this big interlock motor thing with two micro switches on it and i can actually see it rotating inside it seems to be slipping and like there's something i i suspect there could be something wrong with that but it could be driven by one of these relays and the wiring inside is quite complicated couldn't get a service manual for it really annoying um so yeah i do <laughs> like tracing the thing out is like eh. anyway um can you spot a potential problem here? <laughs> not that I think this was is causing the problem. Probably not, but it indicates a problem. So, um, yeah, look. Ta-da! Look. <laughs> the magic fluid has escaped, right? This cap, look. <laughs> right, it's right under there, and this cap was actually bent over like that. So it's actually come out, and it's all oh, the magic uh, fluid has the magic electrolyte has escaped it has escaped um and what what brand are these oh board's too high it's not going to focus not sure what that is what's that symbol uh, i don't know offhand that that's not ringing a bell anyway i did measure these caps in circuit um and they seemed okay even this one actually seemed uh okay but, um, of course, the cap can still read OK, but its ESR has gone through the roof. So, yeah, um, it's uh, series resistant. So, anyway, that seems to be that cap. It's directly connected across here. And this, what is this? Let's have a squares. Now, not that, um, please forgive me, this probably will not be a repair video. This will just be a inspecting the board kind of video. So that's some sort of uh, MOSFET-y, switchy thing. What's an I per... It's an ST jobby. VI per 22A? Aha! Uh -huh. It's a Viper 22A. Low power offline switch mode primary, uh, primary switcher. There you go. 60 kilo fixed, uh, 60 kilohertz switching frequency. So there you go. It's got a built-in MOSFET. That's, inter that's an interesting part, isn't it? Yeah, so it's like a primary side, yeah, primary side switching controller in this particular case for a uh, battery charger. Ah, 
interesting, but you know, you could use it for a ton of different applications. So obviously they're not charging a battery here. Um, internal controls and uh, drain source, right? So anyway, that cap, so I'd assume that cap is like C, equivalent to C5 there, which is like the power rail. So drain at the top, source down there, and VDD. So if we go back to the video tape here, yeah, the cap is across the uh, source and VDD there. There you go. So it's across the uh, it's across the rail. But um, yeah, I don't like I don't see how that's related to driving this interlock mechanism because the interlock mechanism goes kaklunk 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 like it's slipping. The cogs are slipping in there. But whether or not it's got some relay driving. You see two um, interlock micro switches on the uh, top, and this whole that whole arm with the with the uh, Teflon thing there. It rotates, um, and like you can't force it. It's really like a lot of force on this thing. It, uh, I did actually get it just to rotate the once, um, and now it's uh, the oven's actually permanently locked. <laughs> <laughs> now the door's locked. <laughs> so yeah, it was open before, now it's locked. But uh, yeah, yeah, the magic electrolyte has uh, escaped from there. So, um, but I, I suspect that's not related. I'd, I'd actually be quite surprised. But yeah, without like a wiring diagram and, and tracing this out, I don't know how these like, like, because there's lots of, there's just a lot of interconnection wires actually um, joined onto that um, motor thing just just that interlock thing because it's got it you know it's got to disable stuff and it's got it you know like it's anyway um for those fanboys um here you go here you go you want to know what the micro is down here of course you do of course you do there you go the st fanboys go wild so st72 c uh, 254 so anyway all the um all the joints look good like there's nothing like there's no you know all the relay Relays look really good. Nothing else looks, nothing else looks blown or anything. Now, interestingly, the only connection, the only connection is here. This is the only connection to well, apart from all of the, you know, apart from all the relays, the only like logic stuff um, is is actually this connection down here. Which is interesting, and it's only a four-pin jobby. Um, I, I, it looks like this connection over here comes from the micro one of the micro switches on that interlock mechanism yeah it's so that's all that all looks like it's controlled via the micro the st micro is controlling the uh oh look you can see, <laughs> see the dots um the st micro is actually controlling the how that interlock works right well, look you can see the two little dots there they put down the glue that, that is the glue that holds these components in place when they flip the board upside down and put it through the wave soldering machine. So there you go. So yeah, but once again, uh, you can see that again there. They put the dots there, but they decide to unpopulate that. But uh, yeah, single-sided boards. Single-sided boards. You save cost. Seriously. <laughs> in appliance manufacture like this, even your you know, $10,000 plasma TV, you'll still find a single-sided power supply board. For example, um, and none of that FR4 rubbish, right? Phenolic base, right? <laughs> they said because they saved, a, you know, they, they saved a dollar on the board or whatever. So anyway, yeah, I'm greatly doubting that will fix it uh, by replacing uh, that cap. Anyway, um, let's suck it and suck it and see. Actually, we can actually measure that in circuit. That's a 33 mic. There you go, 27 mic. So it's a bit under, bit under, bit in, bit that's in circuit. You know, um, I did actually measure the other ones. Is this the same? No, this is uh, 22 mic. That's 19 mic. Eh, you might actually, re you know, it, like you might deca you might recap these um, as a matter of course. That there's a thousand mic. Oh, are we going to be able to get that in circuit? Yep. Yeah. Ah, yeah. That's good enough for Australia. This bad boy's a hundred mic. 86. Yeah. 47 microfarads. Now, of course, you have to suspect caps because this is literally an oven. Okay, I know it's outside the shell, but it gets hot in there, right? So the last thing you oh, four mic. Four mic, really? Let's swap the leads. Have I got the right pins? 
Four mic. Four microfarads, really? Oh yeah, yeah, 4.7400 volts. Okay, I didn't know they had mains on there. Okay, there you go. Before I take that out, I'll just mark the negative pin there because this does not have a silk screen on it. <laughs> so, yeah, don't want to come a gutso with that. There he is. There he is. Can't see anything down in there, but there's no way that you get a stain like that <laughs> right under your cap <laughs> without that being the electrolyte. There's 28 microfarads. Dissipation factor of 0.22. Let's put it in ESR mode. Oh, I should measure that at 100 kilohertz, shouldn't we? 0.8 ohms. That actually seems okay. Now, I don't actually have a 33 microfarad 50 volt um, jobby. So, it, yeah, I'm going to have to either get one or um, scrounge or <laughs> attempt to scrounge from somewhere. But, um, yeah, unfortunately, I don't keep a big stock of electrolytic caps. I should, but, you know, I'm not in the repair business. Anyway, it could be a while until this is uh, back up and running. Uh, but, in fact, we've just found a replacement oven, uh, which is um, cheap. <laughs> like the same oven because uh, which is cheaper than getting a replacement uh, board but like I said I don't think this is going to uh, fix it I think uh, we have an issue with the motor uh, drive for the interlock on the front panel front panel interlock on there um, so yeah I, I think this is just a furphy I just wanted to show you the PCB these are interesting, and they've got integral right angle um, a PCB mount spade lugs in there, which then go in. Made in the EU, thank you very much. Find a brand. Like I said, I don't suspect anything there. Like, you go in, and you could, like, buzz out to make sure, like, at least there a relay contacts there, you know, and stuff like that. But yeah, like I said, I don't think that's uh, this board's the issue. I think it's more likely to be a stuck duck mechanical uh, problem. And nope. That didn't fix it. Uh, I did find a replacement cap, slightly higher in value, that's all right. And no, I'm not sure if you can see that, but down in there was that torch. That cog down in there, maybe you can see that it's, it's trying to go. See that cog down on the bottom edge and bottom there? It's trying, it's trying its heart out, but sort of like flickering, stuttering back and forth there. So that, for all the world, to me, looks like a some sort of problem with that mechanism there that is designed to drive this interlock arm, which has this, uh, you can see there, has this uh, little Teflon spacer on it. And um, it's doing the auto lock thing. And, yeah, it's not a happy camper. Not a happy camper at all. And there we go. And we've got our, um, oh, was it F03 or F33 last time? F03. F03, there you go. Same fault. So, there you go. That didn't fix it. As I suspected, that cap was, um, yeah, it was faulty. Should have been replaced. But uh, it wasn't related to that fault. So, I don't know. Catch you next time.